AI could very arguably actually go back into, you know, the core roots of what we've historically referred to as data science. And then as that progressed into machine learning, data science being the notion of, of looking for patterns or looking for unique scenarios within data and asking data questions in mass that allows you to build statistical models and understanding uh, and having the unique expertise to be able to extract some level of pattern-based analysis or truths from that data. The next step as you did that was now machine learning, which very quickly realized that human ability to extract the, those knowledge, those stories from large sums of data was directly limited by Number one, our ability to find and recognize those patterns in mass. But then number two, the sheer weight of processing so much information as quickly as we can to be able to create absolute truths from that knowledge, or at least directional truths. That's where machine learning came in. It augmented our ability to be able to do that and then slowly learned patterns of behavior to further add to the scaling complexity that I just mentioned a moment ago. As we got into the generative AI component of the discussion, now you start to get into the scenario where as you train a large model, how does that model amalgamate and normalize these large sums of data and start to give you a view of what the amalgamated data looks like to be able to answer your question effectively and also uh, begin to anticipate where to source from and pull from to be able to give you the most complete and potentially accurate answer possible within guardrails that are placed within the model to be able to keep it on track with a particular point of view or set of perspectives that would contribute to the ultimate outcome of the processing of these large sums of data. That's where the generative AI starts to come in and it, it's become so exciting for all of us as we we suddenly have the ability to shrink the, the global data environment to a way that's consumable and useful and be able to prosecute it without having to be able to write complex queries and simply ask it in, in real text or open or free text format to be able to give us answers to our questions in the way that we would interface with humans. The next bastion of, of this journey is the agentic movement. And the agentic movement simply says, imagine a scenario where you now give a robotic function the ability, the authority, and the autonomy to start to, number one, interact in your digital environment on your behalf. Number two, have the, not just the ability, but the authority to act on your behalf. The trust has been established and extended to that machine to act on your behalf, both point in time and over time. And then ultimately, it starts to learn and understand your desires and needs and actually anticipate them and then begin to take action based on that anticipated understanding without you having to go back and tell it to.